Hello, my name is Barry McCleary. Over the coming months, Megasum will be producing training videos for a number of our methods. I hope that you find these videos are useful. The theory of the malt beta gluconase assay procedure is shown in this slide. The substrate is carboxymethyl dyed mixed linkage beta glucan. This is hydrolyzed by malt beta gluconase to smaller degree of polymerization fragments that remain in solution on addition of a precipitant. These fragments are dyed, meaning that a color stays in solution and this color is directly related to the level of the malt beta gluconase activity. So after adding the precipitant and, set, and um, mixing the tubes thoroughly, the tubes are centrifuged, the color in the supernatant solution is then measured at 590 nanometers. And this is calculated back as malt beta gluconase activity by reference to a standard curve. The malt and bacterial beta gluconase kit as received contains a booklet with the full assay method, two vials of azobali glucan substrate, a vial containing malt flour control, and two vials of concentrated buffer solution. The azobali glucan solution can be purchased separately in 100 ml vials. Precipitant solution A is prepared by dissolving 40 grams of sodium acetate and 4 grams of zinc acetate in 150 mL of distilled water. This is adjusted to pH 5 with concentrated hydrochloric acid and the volume is adjusted to 200 mL. To this solution add 800 mL of methyl salicylic or methoxyethanol and mix well. Store this in a sealed Duran bottle. Extractant buffer solution A is prepared by diluting one vial of concentrated buffer A, 25 ml, to 500 ml with distilled water. This solution is made up to volume in a measuring cylinder. It's then transferred to a Duran bottle. This is then mixed well and capped before use. This should be stored at approximately 5 degrees centigrade between use. If you need to prepare more of this extraction buffer or the concentrated form, a recipe is given in page 3 of the information booklet. Azobali glucan solution is provided in a form ready to use immediately. This should be warm to room temperature before dispensing and should be dispensed with a positive displacement dispenser because the solution is quite viscous. Grain or malt samples are milled to pass a 0.5 mm screen using a Frisch or Resch centrifugal mill. After milling, the mill lid is removed and the sample is transferred from the collection tray to a plastic bag. This is then transferred to a plastic storage container for convenience. Accurately weigh 0.5 grams of milled malt sample into a polypropylene tube or a glass tube of approximately 17 mil capacity.
Add 8 ml of extraction buffer solution A to each tube containing the milled malt samples. Cap these tubes. and stir the contents vigorously on a vortex mixer. Leave these samples to extract for approximately 15 minutes at room temperature with occasional mixing on the vortex mixer. Remove the caps from the extraction tubes then place these tubes into a bench centrifuge and centrifuge at 1800G or 3000 RPM for approximately 10 minutes. With a positive displacement dispenser Dispense 0.5 ml of the azo barley glucan substrate into the reaction tubes and into two tubes to be used as blanks. This solution is viscous, so be careful when dispensing to use a positive displacement dispenser. Then dispense the liquid down into the tube. Place this rack, which contains the substrate and the enzyme extra extracts to be assayed into a water bath at 30 degrees centigrade. After pre-incubation of the substrate and the malt extracts at 30 degrees centigrade for approximately 5 minutes, transfer 0.5 ml of the extract to the azobiliglucan substrate. Start the stop clock. Do this in duplicate for each of the extracts and start the reactions on approximately 15 second intervals. Mix the contents extremely well on a vortex mixer. Change the tip and remove to the second sample. Then add the enzyme extract to the substrate, mix well, and then add to the other duplicate after 15 seconds. Allow these to incubate at 30 degrees centigrade for exactly 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minute incubation period, the reaction is terminated by adding 3 ml of precipitant solution A. This is added to the tubes on 15 second intervals, exactly the same sequence as in which the reactions were started. The tubes are stirred extremely well on the test tube stirrer. and they're placed in a rack at room temperature. It's absolutely critical that these tubes are stirred very, very well because this is a precipitation reaction. If the solutions aren't mixed thoroughly, this reaction won't occur properly. When all the tubes have been, the reactions have been stopped and the tubes stirred, repeat the whole process. These tubes will then be left at room temperature for approximately 5 to 10 minutes before they're centrifuged and the colour is red. A single reaction blank is normally sufficient for each batch of malt samples analysed. This is prepared by adding the precipitant solution to the substrate in the tube 
and then adding the malt extract and mixing at the same time. This ensures that the enzyme is inactivated before it has any opportunity to act on the substrate. After the tubes have been allowed to stand at room temperature for approximately five minutes, stir them again on the vortex mixer and then place the tubes into a centrifuge and run the centrifuge for 10 minutes at 3000 RPM or approximately 1800 G. After centrifugation for 10 minutes the tubes are removed and we can see the colours of the supernatant solutions in the tube shown here. On the left hand side we see the blank. In this case all of the dyed polysaccharide is precipitated from solution so on centrifugation a colourless solution is obtained. This has an absorbance typically of about 0.05 to 0.09 at 590 nanometers. The next two tubes, label 1 and 2, are the reaction tubes. In this case, the beta-glucanase is hydrolyzed part of the azobali glucan, which stays in solution on addition of the precipitant solution. This gives, gives a clear blue-colored solution. This solution, or the absorbance of this solution, is measured at 590 nanometers on a spectrophotometer. Having measured the absorbance at 590 nanometers of the reaction solutions, the activity of malt beta gluconase can be determined by reference to the standard curve shown here, or alternatively by using the equation y equals mx plus c. The values of m, the slope, and c, the intercept on the y-axis, are given on the vial of beta glucan substrate uh, or on the kit as supplied. To be absolutely sure of the malt beta gluconase activity for an unknown sample, the absorbance value for that unknown sample can be compared to what's obtained for the beta gluconase control malt that's applied with the kit. And that's done using the equation shown here, where units per kilogram of malt equals Y multiplied by A on B, where Y is the malt beta -glu gluconase activity in units per kilogram of malt as calculated using the equation on the previous slide and A and B are the activity value of the control malt and B is the activity value of the control malt as calculated using equation 1.